this week on Marketplace. Hi there, how are you today? The Returns Desk. Just have a return here. Yeah. It's where shops and shoppers can collide. So I can have cash back? Three Canadians try to get their money back. It's going to be tough. In a series of tests that challenge the rules of returning. Can you have a piece of ID with you? We reveal how to get past the point of no returns. If you don't want to do it, you have to talk to him. Every week, a million shoppers jam the stores of Toronto's Eaton Centre. Three Marketplace viewers are getting ready to join the crowds, but they won't be spending, they'll be taking things back. My name's Danielle Cloutier and I'm from Windsor, Ontario. My name is Eno DeVille, I'm from Milton, Ontario. I'm Wolfgang Van Rosen and I'm from Oakville. We're sending these three on a Marketplace mission to test those frustrating retail return policies we've all struggled with. Should be able to just go right in, do an exchange, and should be simple, simple process. My personal experience with the returns process can be very frustrating. And I think a lot of people um, are afraid to, to actually return and, and complain. Stores in Canada don't have to give you your money back, or an exchange, or even a credit. That means a successful return often comes down to a shopper's individual abilities. And that's what we're testing. Love your little bow tie, that's so cute. Thank you. You'll watch on hidden camera as we give our three testers challenges that could handcuff the most seasoned shopper. But to help them out, we're sending them to a special boot camp first. It's a crash course on how to negotiate at the returns desk. Hey guys, Hello. welcome. Leading the class is a guy who's an expert in getting his way. Hi guys, nice to meet you. Bill Smalley is a professional negotiator who teaches others how to do it too. All right, well welcome to our Marketplace boot camp where it is all about the returns desk. Bill says the key is to get comfortable. The reason that negotiating is uncomfortable has to do with one thing, conflict. Well, not everyone here is uncomfortable. Wolfgang is a bit of a ringer. I return items uh, on average about twice a month. My conviction is that I gave you money, my money is good, so the product itself should also be perfect. Right away, our experts got a tip. Ask the clerk for help. It's not you demanding something, that's a power-based approach. It's not you trying to uh, force that person to comply with your will because you feel entitled. You're saying, Let's work towards what we both want here. Danielle is fresh off a difficult return. When she got it home, her new TV was damaged, but Future Shop told her to deal with the manufacturer, LG. So I put the damaged TV back in the box and I went to the store the very next morning to return it. And I was told it was considered concealed damage, therefore it was LG's problem and not Future Shop's. I should have just done a simple exchange. Our experts got more tips. Stay calm and hang in there. The toughest negotiators have one advantage over most of us. They outlast us. Time for our testers to try out their new negotiating skills. I get to play a difficult sales clerk as Eno tries to bring back some earrings. Hi, can I help you? Yes, my wife doesn't like them, doesn't fit her style. Unfortunately, because they are earrings, I can't return them. We have a policy that it's not hygienic to return these things. So unfortunately, I'll have to give these back to you. Um, I don't know what to say. That's, at this point, I would just cave in. <laughs> because, because it's hygienic. <laughs> okay, so our testers need to review the negotiating tip sheet. Get comfortable with conflict. Ask the clerk for help. Stay calm and hang in there. You up for it? Yes. Okay, be on your way. Tomorrow they'll need those skills as they test the art of negotiating for real. It's day two of our Marketplace Boot Camp. 
Welcome to Return Challenge Day. Are you ready? Yes. You certainly look ready. You're looking very professional in your suit, Danielle. Our testers have dressed for return success, and we accessorize with a few hidden cameras. Okay, guys, you ready for your first challenge? Yeah. These guys don't have a clue what products they'll be taking back or under what conditions, but they're about to find out. Okay, Wolf, you've got a printer ink cartridge from Best Buy. Eno, a pair of shoes from Aldo. And Danielle, you're returning a doll to Disney. All of these have their original receipts. We paid cash. Now I want you to take the products out of the bags and out of their packaging. Then we up the stakes. I want you to throw the packaging away. Your challenge is we want you to bring back all of these products. You've got the receipts, but you don't have the original packaging. And we want you to get cash back only. No store credit, no exchange. Challenge one, no original packaging, because that defeats a lot of shoppers at the returns desk. I've never uh, in my life returned for cash any item without the packaging. I think uh, I might have to escalate uh, to a manager. Well, I'm thinking it's going to take some persistence on my part because it clearly states on the receipt that a full refund will not be issued without the original packaging. We hook up our testers with our Marketplace team, also wearing hidden cameras. Do you think you're ready? Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Off you go. With products in hand, but no packaging, our testers will be using common reasons for their returns. Inside Aldo, Eno's off to a good start. Hi, I'm Eno. How are you? Good, how are you? Well, I purchased the shoes and they're not very comfortable. Uh, so I'd like to return them for a couple The first clerk hands them to a second and a third. Your the box. I know, I know that. He tries one of the tips he's learned. Ask for help. Is there anything you can do for me? And if you have to talk to the manager, While she gets the manager, Danielle's at a Disney store with an everyday story about a doll with no packaging. Unfortunately, uh, the doll got the packaging and completely shredded it. Once again, the manager's called over. So knowing about the original packaging, I just got to do a store credit for you. A credit isn't good enough, though, for our challenge. We asked our testers to get our cash back. No, but I did pay cash with it. Mm, like, the problem is, like, it's not in a resellable condition, so nobody wouldn't get a refund. Now it's Danielle's turn to pull a line from our expert's playbook. She asks for help, too. Is there anything you can do for me? Just spend me two seconds, all right? Thank you. I really appreciate it. Over at Best Buy, Wolfgang's also using his training to take back an ink cartridge with no box. And, uh, I'm so sorry, I don't have the packaging, and that's, that's my fault. How will our testers do? Success or epic fail? So, where's the box? I don't, don't have the box. I accidentally threw it away. Because without the box, I can't sell it to your customer. We're at Toronto's Eaton Centre, taking on Canada's return policies. In this first challenge, returning products without the original packaging. At Best Buy, our tester Wolfgang has no trouble returning an ink cartridge with no box. Thank you, really appreciate it. And he's pretty pleased about it. Over at Disney, the manager repeats the store's policy about needing the packaging, but then... We'll make one exception for you today, right? So, no worries. That's all right. Thank you. Success number two. Thank you. Danielle signs the receipt and heads out with money in hand. At Aldo, things are more difficult for Eno. He's explaining again what happened to the shoebox, this time to the manager. So, where's the box? I don't, don't have the box. I accidentally threw it away. Yeah, because without the box, I can't sell it to your customer. A lot of shoppers might give up at this point, but Eno hangs in there. Is there anything you can do? Perhaps you can find some ground here? Will it help? Just, uh, just give it a... Uh, 
guess I'm just not the boss. But okay. okay. And we're three for three. Thank you very much. No problem. Have, Have a good day. Bye. Back at boot camp, congrats all round. Oh, Bill, well done. <laughs> well done, guys. In all three cases, stores bent their return rules after our testers admitted the packaging was an issue and asked for help. Good job, that's exactly yeah. what you were taught. <laughs> and when you do that, it makes it easier for them. You actually reduce the conflict. Now, are you ready for challenge number two? Yes. Bring it on. Well, for you, a pair of sunglasses. For you, Eno, a bottle of rum. Danielle, a book. For the second challenge, things are about to get a whole lot harder. Okay, now hand over the receipt. Thank you very much. Thank you. And for this challenge, hand over your personal ID. What? If they ask for your name, your number, your phone number, don't give anything. We want you to try for cash, but you can settle for a store credit or an exchange. Challenge two targets the fact a lot of stores now ask people to disclose personal info during returns. I'm thinking it's crazy. You don't have a receipt, you don't provide any ID. I, I would turn myself away. I don't think the request for a full refund is going to work, but maybe an exchange is doable. I am so very against providing personal information, so I'm looking forward to the challenge. Refusing to give personal info got Eno banned from a shopper's drug mart when a $7 return got heated. At the end, the store manager did give me a refund, but at the same time, he gave me a paper, and the paper stated that should I return to the store, I can be charged and arrested. So how will Eno do here if he's asked for ID? We've sent him to Ontario's government-run liquor store, where the clerk tells Eno, without a receipt, he can only exchange that bottle of rum. If you're gonna get a refund, we need a receipt. Is that a policy? That's a policy, yeah. Hmm, time to talk to the manager. Meanwhile, over at Sunglass Hut, Wolfgang psychs himself up and takes the plunge. I'm Wolfgang and uh, I bought some uh, sunglasses for my wife and she doesn't like them. Right away, Wolf's offered an exchange, but he's holding out for cash. Do you think you'll get your money back? Oh, I'm gonna try my hardest. Same with Danielle inside Indigo. No receipt, but determined to get cash back for her book. I'm gonna do a return. I misplaced the receipt. I do have the original bag that I purchased it in. Okay. I can give you a credit note if you don't have a receipt. No, you can't do cash at all? I did purchase it with cash. I understand, but we need the receipt. Both Danielle and Wolf try for sympathy. Well, so I'm kind of short on cash. How can you help me? I, I, like, this is a really bad situation for me. Yeah, I do come here quite a bit. But the answers they get are the same. No cash refund. So sorry. Danielle finally decides to take the credit and run. But then the second part of the challenge kicks in. No giving personal information. Can I get your first and last name? What do you need my name for? Because you're doing a refund. Sorry, I'm just very reluctant to give out my personal information. A second clerk gets involved, but Danielle stands firm. We just got a postal code from you. I don't give anything whatsoever else. Sorry. The clerk gives up, and Danielle emerges with a store credit and her privacy intact. Take care. Thanks. Back at Sunglass Hut, the clerk is on the phone to the manager. So, I have a quick question for you. But sticks to store policy. The only thing I could offer you is an exchange. The best I can offer. Over at the liquor store, the manager's hearing that Eno only wants cash. Yeah, I don't really drink, right? Is there any way you can help me? The manager says something to the cashier. It seems Eno might just get his way. But then. Uh-oh, a request for his personal information. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't really feel comfortable providing my personal information, so okay? This kind of thing got Eno banned from one store. How about at the liquor store? Jay, he says he doesn't want to give me his information. Okay. Can't help it. He's told there's no help to be had. 
So what's the deal with ID? Stephen O'Keefe speaks for stores. He's with the Retail Council of Canada. Should people have to give over their home phone number, their email, sign something with their signature just for a refund? You put those conditions in hopefully not to uh, affect the honest customer, but to act as some kind of a deterrent effect to the customers who take advantage. He says customers who take advantage cost stores more than a billion dollars a year. The effect on the profitability of the store is so detrimental that you really have to pay attention to it. It's a balancing act. Stores want happy customers, but can't take everything back. So now we're really gonna find out Where's the point of no returns? We're about to start challenge number three, and it is out there. This next challenge is based on extreme returns that happen more often than you think. Wolf, uh -oh. $10. Mm -hmm. Your assignment is to take that money, go into McDonald's, order a meal, Yes. eat half of it, Yes. change your mind, and ask for a refund. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> and Eno, here is your assignment. Can of paint. This is a custom order that you have requested. A can of lovely lady and now you've changed your mind and you want a refund. Okay. Danielle, for your challenge, Megan, could you step in please? This dress has been worn to a party and we're gonna ask you to return it. Challenge three, extreme returns that test how far stores will go to keep a customer. There's no way that I can return this. It's uh, next to impossible to return it, but never say never. In this challenge, I could put myself in their shoes and completely see how I should be turned away. I thought it was doable. I, I still had the receipt and the tags were still attached to the dress. Okay guys, no easy task. We're going to bring in the reinforcements again, our Marketplace staffers. Are you all ready? Yes. Okay, well, head on out. We'll see what happens. Our testers sure have their work cut out for them with this challenge. With no returns or exchanges allowed on tinted paint, Eno's return seems the toughest one of all. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Good, thank you. Uh, I'd like to return this, please. My wife gave me a big grief about it. Carl is not the lovely lady anymore. <laughs> Will he get a lovely return? We'll find out. Like I said, on paints, there's no refunds or exchanges. Our three testers have spread out in and around Toronto's Eaton Centre. They're trying to get a refund or credit to see how far stores will bend their return policies to keep customers happy. Danielle's trying something people do all the time, returning clothing after it's been worn. In the industry, it's a worry called wardrobing. Hi there, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Good, I just wanted to return this dress. Is the issue? Well, I'm a bit of an impulsive buyer. I got it home. I didn't like it so much. We do have a policy of exchange or store credit. I can't have cash back? No, why is that? It's just one of our policies. Yeah. Can't do cash at all? Yeah. Did you make any exception whatsoever? Wolfgang's not working nearly as hard at the Golden Arches. Danielle decides to politely escalate. Is there anybody else I could speak with possibly about this? Okay. Yeah, no problem. Take your time. And it pays off. I'll do it out of goodwill for you. Great. Thank you so much. But yeah, that is our policy just for future offense, okay? Great. Perfect. Thank you. So it's 146.85. The store may take it back, but Stephen O'Keefe with the Retail Council of Canada says most previously enjoyed clothing can't be resold. So that is a hit to the retailer because they are not sending it back to the manufacturer if they're importing it. So they're taking a 100% loss on that item. And how does it affect us as a consumer? It'll affect us in uh, higher prices, uh, continuation of higher prices in order to offset that cost. So you know, we offered to pay back the retailers we visited or donate the money to charity. At Canadian Tire, all of Eno's boot camp skills are focused on that can of paint. Okay, tinted paints are final sale, we can't refund them. 
I can't take it home. My wife would just give me a very hard time. On so if I take it back, it's just going to go in the garbage. I didn't know that. It says it right on your receipt. It also says at the top of the can. Is there anything you can do for me? 20 seconds. Tick by. I'm trying to think of something I can yeah. do with it. And you know, I, we shop at Canadian Tire all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Finally. Can you put in a refund card? Yeah. Okay. Thank so you. we put in a refund card. It's just a merchandise card. You have a year to spend money. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Eno outlasts the manager. No cash, but a huge result with the refund card. So you have fifty-four dollars and twenty-three cents. Okay. Perfect. Meantime, Wolf prepares to return half a meal. My mouth. Wow, he gets all his money back. Just goes to show how far a company will go to keep a customer satisfied. And you know what? To the credit of McDonald's, that's really cool. Back at boot camp. So it's been a long day. I'm curious to find out what the big messages were for you. Trying to work with the retailer. Remaining calm and collective and confident. The approach that engages the other person. As opposed to telling them, this is my right, you gotta fulfill it. Fulfill it. You guys were terrific sports. Thanks so much for taking place in our Marketplace Boot Camp. Thank you. Use Thanks your well. force for good. Thank you. Well done. The lesson learned here, knowing how to negotiate can bring many happy returns. Good students. They did very well. <laughs>